The theory of evolution is now being challenged by a new theory that says the universe looks designed because it was designed. The concept is called intelligent design because it claims there was an intelligence behind creation. A leading proponent is Dr. Stephen Meyer. He's director of the Center for Science and Culture at Seattle's Discovery Institute and co-author of Darwinism, Design, and Public Education. Disagreeing with him is Dr. Michael Shermer, publisher of Skeptic Magazine and author of The Science of Good and Evil. I want to start with you, Dr. Meyer, uh, because you're kind of making the affirmative claim here and say, you know, if you can just avoid the technical jargon as much as you can, give me three or four reasons why you believe there is an intelligent designer of the universe. You bet. Maybe I should start from the beginning. Uh, cosmologists and physicists uh, now tell us that the universe began from a finite, uh, a finite time ago, from an infinitesimally small spatial volume, effectively a zero point in which there was neither matter, nor space, nor time, nor energy. And this points to a cause beyond the universe, uh, uh, the cause of, for, for the cause of the universe itself, something that, uh, a cause that would transcend matter, space, time, and energy. Secondly, physicists are now talking about the fine-tuning of the universe. They tell us that the initial arrangement of matter, the, uh, the laws and constants of physics, are all delicately balanced to allow uh, for life to exist. For example, if the force of gravitational attraction were a little bit stronger or weaker, if the, if the rate of the expansion of the universe were a little bigger or smaller, life would be impossible as we know it. One physicist, Sir Fred Hoyle, has said that uh, it looks as if a super intellect has uh, monkeyed with physics and chemistry to make life possible. And thirdly, and I think most importantly, in the realm of biology, people have over the last 50 years discovered an intricate realm of nanotechnology and information processing. There are little miniature circuits inside cells, so-called signal transduction circuits. There are uh, little miniature machines. My colleague Michael Behe at the Discovery Institute has made one of these famous, a little rotary engine inside the cell wall that looks like something, for all the world, like something that, uh, that Mazda designed. It has O-rings, it has bushings, it has a drive shaft, it has a little propeller that moves this little bacterium through, through liquid. It's, this is, this is high-tech in low life. And I think finally and most importantly is the discovery that at the base of all life, all life depends on information. That it depends on a four-character di digital code that is uh, resident in the DNA molecule. And people who are trying to explain the origin of life through various types of evolutionary theory have been utterly flummoxed by the question of the origin of this, these genetic assembly instructions. Uh, Michael, you're the editor of Skeptic Magazine. I don't expect you to be anything less than skeptical about that. Well, how do you analyze the evidence as Dr. Meyer presented it? Well, it's important to note that um, when we're talking about those kinds of questions, regardless of whether uh, the answers I'm about to give are right or not, and they, they may change because science is constantly changing, uh, the default answer is not that therefore there must be a designer or a god. Uh, a default answer that's perfectly acceptable in science is we don't know. Now, we do know actually quite a bit about uh, the four categories that Stephen just discussed. For example, um, the fact that the universe had an origin and therefore there must have been a creator uh, just begs the question of, well, who created the creator or the intelligent designer? The fact that something has to have a creation just, uh, just leads to the next question of, well, then who created that entity and who created that entity? And the theological answer is, well, God is that which does not need to be created. Well, why can't the universe be that which does not need to be created? Okay, let's pause there. there. Michael, that's a very good point. Yeah. Very good point, Stephen. I, I, well, I, what I would say to that is that, that uh, philosophically, something has to be the thing from which everything else comes. Something has to be what philosophers call the, the prime reality. And, Why does uh, that have to be God? And, and, I well, mean, maybe the, who created God? That's the, what I the, want to know. The Big Bang theory and general relativity suggest that matter is a crummy candidate to be the thing from which everything else comes. Because if you go back far enough, you 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 end up in a, with a place in which you have no matter. It no may space, not be no matter. Time, no it may energy. just be pure energy. It could be quantum foam fluctuation. It could be a black hole in another universe. It could be a number of things. We're not well, sure what, yet. Well, what, what what physicists are saying now is that the, the the primary thing at the very beginning is actually an information wave. And again, we're back to the same argument I was making in biology, that information in our experience comes from mind. And so from what we know about the, the, the causes of the origin of information, we're looking at evidence of design 
not only in life, but right back to the beginning of the universe. Okay, but where did the information come from, in your opinion, in the first place? I, I think it came from an intelligent creator that transcends matter, and, space, time, and energy. And who created that intelligent I creator? Think, I think that is the prime reality. Okay, Michael, yeah. beyond this issue of the beginning of the universe, yeah, okay. and, and it seems to me he's saying whatever begins to exist has a cause, the universe virtually every scientist admits began to exist, therefore must have a cause. Yeah, yeah but you're just talking about argument. ultimate causes. I understand right. that, but the, the question <laughs> then becomes, you know... Yeah, let's talk about design and biology. And, and all, all right, let's, okay, let's move on so to let's go to, the, let's go to the next point. Um, it looks designed. It is designed. That's why it looks designed. It is designed. We're not d debating whether it's design or not. There is design. You'd be, have to be barking mad to not think that the life is not, is not designed. It is designed, but it's designed from the bottom up by a natural process of evolution. And that's why it looks tinkered and not very well designed and sort of patched worked and put together from previous uh, organisms and structures and functions and so on. It doesn't look to me very well intelligent design. Good point, Stephen. How do you respond to those? Well, I, I think it's exquisitely designed, especially when you look at, at what's going on at the molecular level and the information processing system that is the basis of all living systems. He's made the argument, for example, that the eye is not, is not well designed because uh, uh, the wiring appears inverted to some, to some uh, uh, physiologists, but, but others dispute that and say that the vertebrate eye is an exquisitely designed system that represents uh, uh, what engineers call constrained optimization, where many factors have been optimized to uh, achieve the best overall functionality. So this vertebrate eye that, that uh, evolutionists say is not uh, well designed that looks tinkered with is actually the same eye that eagles use to achieve this incredible visual acuity that they have. you look at the human body, I mean, it's just, you, you have to believe in a higher power than what we are. It's, it's not a random occurrence. I'm all for the Big Bang Theory as long as God created the Big Bang. I'm a true believer in God, so I don't think science made us, I think God did. I don't know about the Big Bang Theory, I'm not sure about that one, but I don't think anybody created the world, no. We're back discussing evolution versus intelligent design with Dr. Stephen Meyer and Dr. Michael Shermer. Uh, Stephen, the intelligent design movement has been criticized by some by saying, hey, it's just a bunch of Christians trying to get their theological viewpoint propagated. Uh, is that a fair criticism? Well, it, it would be fair if it were also fair to say that Darwinism has been undermined in its credibility by the fact that many or most Darwinists are agnostics or atheists. I mean, Michael Shermer and Eugenie Scott and Richard Dawkins have all signed the, uh, the Third Humanist Manifesto, which is a call for an aggressive atheistic world order. And uh, two can play that motive-mongering game, but the problem with it is that it doesn't settle anything. You have to evaluate arguments by the quality of the evidence and the reasoning that are used to support them. And there has and been M Michael, a, Michael and, and Shermer wants to a, say a, that, that belief in intelligent design is a weird belief that's used to justify um, a prior religious commitment. We think it's a perfectly sensible belief, whatever your religious commitment. If you see evidence of, uh, of software or something that functions like software, it's perfectly reasonable to infer that there was a programmer. Of course, but when almost every single member I know of of your movement is an evangelical Christian, you hardly have any Jews or Baptists or Buddhists or anything like that, that makes well, me simple, suspect. That, that, that's that, that just makes me false. suspect of something. It would be like if every single member of a group were Democrat or Republican, and I would think, okay, maybe they're right, but that makes makes me skeptical of something else going on here. Stephen, I want to ask you, is it possible to believe in Darwinian evolution and be a Christian? Um, yeah, it's certainly possible as a, matter, as, a, as a personal matter, but I think it's logically contradictory. The problem is, it really depends on what you mean by evolution. If by evolution you mean simply that things change, yeah, things change, and, uh, um, and, and you can believe that and be a Christian, a theist, a Jew, anything you like, and be logically consistent. What Darwinism says, though, is things change as a result of a purely undirected natural process. I don't see why it, it couldn't be perfectly reasonable for a believer to think that it or God or whoever used the natural forces to create life as it is. That's how God works. What's wrong with that? Well, that's right. If he uses natural forces, directs them in some way, that's a form of de design. That's not what Darwinism says. Darwinism says things look designed, but they're not really because an undirected
undirected process produce the appearance of design. But but I mean the actual a designer can't direct an undirected process. Well, a designer could use natural selection. The designer could do anything he wants, particularly but then it's if he's directed process. Isn't well, it's a directed well, process. Well, I mean, first of all, then why are you an atheist, Michael? And secondly, or an agnostic, or whatever you are. And and secondly, this is Darwin explicitly. Uh, uh, rejected that interpretation of natural selection. Okay. The whole point of it is that it's natural selection, he said, acting on random variation. If you want to make it, if you want God directing it, it, it defeats the purpose of my theory, he said. Okay, two, two, two answers. One, I, I'm, I don't believe in God because I don't think the evidence is strong enough to make that commitment, which is not a small commitment to make. It's an important, serious one. Uh, I was once a born again Christian. I, I did that. It was serious. I don't think it's something you take lightly, and uh, my evaluation of the evidence now is just, it's not enough. So, and two, I have a commitment to science, and the scientific method requires that we look for natural explanations for natural phenomena. There is no such thing as the supernatural or the paranormal. There's just the natural, the normal, and all the stuff we can't explain yet. And it's okay in science to just say, I don't know. We don't have answers to all these things. Well, we, we agree with that, too. I mean, there's an awful lot of dogmatic Darwinism that would be a, a much better served by exactly the attitude that you suggest that, you know, okay, rather, rather, than saying, <laughs> rather than saying we understand something we don't, it's good to say we don't know. Yeah. But our argument is based on what we know and, and on the, a kind of logical apparatus that's used routinely in, the, in, in science, which is to say, uh, given the evidence, what's the best explanation given everything we know so far? And, and that's the grounds by which we infer design. Terrific. A very good debate. Thanks for exploring both of it, guys.